Cool. All right. Go live. Split second sometimes for us to go live. Not uncommon for the first minute to be awkward as we're trying to figure out if we're actually live or not. <laughs> so I'm going to check from my phone to see if we're actually live. It says we're live. Looks like people are watching. Looks like it's pulling up on my phone. All right, I'm going to assume that we're live, and I'm assuming people are watching us. So I've got Andrew from Lead Pops joining us today. So hello, Andrew. Hey, Michael. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, of course, man. So I met Andrew through other folks and through Masterminds, and uh, he spoke at an event that we hosted last year. And Andrew has been um, a huge, huge proponent of helping loan officers nationwide be better at I mean, I'm just going to throw it out there, but better at internet marketing, right? I mean, you know, you teach a lot of marketing skills in general, but one thing that you really specialize in is helping LOs understand today's communication and today's back and forth when it comes to websites, emails, texting, all that kind of stuff, right? Yep, it's all, it's all pretty intertwined, just helping LOs understand, like, the whole, it all works together. It's not like my website's separate from my Facebook and that's separate from my email, which is separate from my newsletter, you know, understanding how we can make it all work together to get better results from all of it. I like really it. the key. So s many folks in here already know who you are, but for the folks that don't know who you are, let's talk a little bit about, you know, some of the huge companies that have hired you and a, a little bit of your resume, maybe a little bit about your book as well. I'll just kind of leave it open-ended. Yeah, absolutely. So we started uh, Lead Pops in 2010, just my partner and I. Uh, focus is, is, and it was and is still, lead generation, lead conversion technology, um, you know, understanding that you've got a lot of influence over the actions people take when they find you. You know, just throwing stuff out there and hoping something sticks isn't really effective when, it, you know, there's that much money on the line. You know, you miss out on a loan or two or five or ten loans over one year that you should have closed. That's a lot of money, you know, there's a lot of business out there. And so just putting together tools to help loan officers generate their own exclusive leads. Um, we created our platform, uh, did a beta launch in 2012. Uh, 2013, Zillow hired us to help them redo their entire mortgage marketplace. Um, that was a huge success. They uh, took a lot of what we taught them and a lot of what was uh, kind of shared during that discovery process of helping them literally double, triple, uh, quadruple their conversion rates. So same amount of visitors, same traffic, same amount of money spent, you get double or triple the amount of leads just by weeks, just by presenting the language on the page uh, in an effective way, you know, using a, a, a unique uh, approach to how you ask for the information, not just like a loan application or a whole bunch of questions like give me your name, email, and phone number because you want a quote. There's a whole method as to how to go about asking for that information, generating a lead. It's the same thing you see uh, Lending Tree doing. It's the same thing you see Lower My Bills doing. All these big lead gen companies that have kind of positioned themselves in between the loan officer and the borrower so they can kind of snake your leads from you and make you buy leads you could generate yourself in many cases. Um, so, you know, big companies like Zillow use us. Uh, we've done a lot of work with Bankrate. Um, last year we actually finished up a project where we built Bankrate's entire rate table system. So they used to just use our pages and use our technology. They were a client. Last year they, they kind of bought out a licensed portion of our product and just redid their entire uh, lead approach. They used to do a cost per click strategy. They now sell leads directly using our approach. So instead of just driving traffic to their bar, uh, to their loan officers and their mortgage brokers, they actually just use our platform to generate and sell leads. Um, they saw a huge boost in their conversion rates just, again, by implementing a better mousetrap. So these big billion dollar companies use our platform, but our bread and butter is loan officers and giving LOs who are doing their own marketing, who are working with realtors, uh, you know, doing their own email marketing, social media ads, these kinds of things. Just same tools, same technology that the big boys are using. You can use yourself as an LO. You don't have like to buy that. leads from a middleman. You can do the same thing these big companies are doing. Like, and I like how you know you said you said mousetrap, and you guys are you know you guys are a for-profit business. You're equal opportunity. You don't sign any agreements with Zillow that your work for them is you know you can sell the same concepts and ideas to the LOs that are like you said networking on the streets. Um, you know, you, you wrote a book, Mortgage Marketing Manifesto, many in here have, have read it, I've read it, and I think you said it, it's, it's available on Audible now, right? 
yeah, last, uh, what, six weeks ago maybe, I released the audio version of it. So, uh, you know, 300 pages, it's a, it's a pretty hefty, hefty book. It's got a lot of good information. A lot of folks, you know, these days have a harder time just sitting down and reading something. So uh, I did the audible version of it. It's about six hours long, but obviously you can take that in driving to and from work and doing, you know, going to the gym and those types of things. So just another way to, to consume a, a lot of good and helpful information. And it's really the framework. I mean, a lot of what I – go through and talk about and, and discuss in detail is literally what we built out for Bankrate and Zillow. So the, this is the blueprint. This is the game plan. I didn't hold anything back. Um, and, you know, all that, you get access to that with the Funnels platform that we offer. You know, as you said, we're a for-profit business. There are a lot of tie-ins that show you that, hey, you know, if your marketing is going to work, whether you use lead pops or somebody else does it for you, follow this game plan. You know, this is what you need to do. But obviously our company, we you know, we lead first building that product. That's our that's our bread and butter is, is supplying that mousetrap to loan officers, um, you know, put you in a position to generate your own leads. Figure out, and for me, it's always about figuring out what are you doing currently that we can improve upon before we jump into the next shiny object. You know, there's so much opportunity typically in what loan officers are currently doing and the amount of work they're putting out there and the money that they're spending that it's like before you go out and start talking about another 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 a month on uh, Google AdWords or, or a Facebook funnel strategy, let's do some housekeeping first. You know, before you start cleaning up the garage, let's clean up your bedroom. You know, there's a lot of work we could do there before we start looking at other things that aren't going to have as much of an impact as quickly as the stuff that you're already putting effort and time into. You know, it's as simple as you're going to put a, you're sending an email out later this week to your database. Let's make sure that email content is optimized to convert the recipients back into leads, back into a prospect. If you're just emailing out a bunch of stuff to read with a loan application, you're going to get nothing out of it. If you sign up for like Quicken's mailing list or Lower My Bills or Loan Depot, for example, and you just kind of spy on the competition and see how the big boys are doing it, it's a whole different approach. It's never a wall of text with a email signature that's, you know, call me to talk about a loan. It's a very short, quick, personal, almost feels like a loan officer wrote the email to that individual recipient. There's no flashy newsletter kind of feel to it. And then they're always driving you back to that mousetrap, which is mm -hmm. the multi-step questionnaire that makes answering questions kind of fun. That's all it is. It's just taking the, the typical format of asking for information, turning it inside out, and asking for it in a way that doesn't scare people off. Now, the coolest thing for me, whenever I talk to you, is that you have, you've written the map in your book, I and mean, it's there. The information is not hard to find. You know, some LOs seem to think that, that everything in America is, is a big secret, and, and you know, if they, they find some new information, it's going to transform their business. But you know, all your information is out there pretty much for everybody. The guys at Zillow could have read it and tried to build it themselves, but they didn't. They said, okay, well, we read this, we, you know, we paid attention to Andrew. Those guys know what they're doing. Now, let's actually hire them to do it for us because – it, there's probably some steps in between. So, I mean, you guys, the majority of your revenue is not from selling a book. It's from actually providing those solutions for providing the email series, providing the websites, providing the landing pages, and then, you know, a little bit of one-on-one -on -one to help the loan officers understand how to implement that. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about, I guess, maybe first uh, your websites, because I know that question comes up a lot. And every time it comes up, I, I always tell people they need to check you out before they spend a you know billion hours trying to learn how to create their own site and write a blog. Um, but let's talk about I websites and, and, and you know what the what the purpose of a good website should be for a loan officer. I mean, is it just a business card or is it a, is a lead conversion opportunity or is it a place to capture pixels or you know what's what's the main function of? I mean, you guys have some killer websites, but they're different than what I see a lot of LOs using. So so I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, oh, well, you know, the website should do all of that for you. It should be a credibility piece. It should be a lead generation uh, uh, tool for you, and it should be a pixel builder, like you said, you know, uh, building your audience for you as people hit your website that don't convert into a lead, making sure that you've got the retargeting on there, you've got your Facebook pixel so you can kind of stay in front of these people. Uh, you know, the, the typical loan officer website, though, that I see um, is, is more of an online business card. It's, it's like an online brochure. Even some of them that look nice, they just they don't stand a chance at converting a lead. If if it's not set up in a way that's really driving people strategically into a good lead capture system, then it's just it's a bunch of stuff to read and a loan application. 
and even these fancy loan applications that are coming out, you know, you've got the Blend and the Roostify and all these different tools that are out there. These are really cool uh, service uh, tools, but they're not really lead generators. Even an awesome loan application, no matter how user-friendly it is and how much it automates some of your back-end processes, that's still not going to convert a lead for you uh, from someone that just found you in Google. They don't just jump right into a loan application. Or if they yet, uh, read a Yelp review, or they saw you on Facebook, you know, and now before they just jump into filling out the, the let's just say the Facebook lead generation form, they saw your company, they want to do a little bit of research before talking to a salesperson, so they go out into Google, they Google Mike, you know, Michael Fisher mortgage or some keyword that, that will pull you up, and in that instance, we have to make sure that your website is going to actually capture that person's information and convert them into a lead at the, at the highest rate you can possibly get it, you know, versus they click around and they read some stuff, you, you informed them on, on, you know, some topics on a loan program or whatnot, and then they go back into Google and Zillow sucks them in, or LendingTree gets them, and then you end up, again, you buy a lead you could have generated yourself or your competitor buys your lead. So, let's, you know, having let's, a, go ahead. let's talk just real quick because you brought up a great point there about, you know, what is, as a loan officer and as a marketer, what kind of information can you capture and how valuable is it? I mean, I, I always get LOs that tell me, like, well, Mike, you know, I want I want their phone number and I want their email and I want you know I want to be able to pound them on the phone because that's what I was taught to do in my days you know in the sales center when I had the headset on. It, but there's as a marketer, there's a lot of value to capturing more than just the phone number. Um, you know, having an email, having a pixel, having an audience, like you said, to stay in front of because those folks are out there. They're going to click on your site. They're going to click somewhere else. Going to be clicking around. They're probably most of them aren't making a decision today. And I feel like a lot of loan officers are only focusing on clients that are making a decision today. Like, like I'm spending all my time and energy working to get somebody who's ready to talk to me and tape an application right now, but I have almost no marketing energy or effort going into building a long-term brand or following up with anybody who's come to my page or seen my services or seen me as an LO. Um, you know, do, do you agree with that? I mean, what kind of things are valuable for the LOs to capture? Well, the more, Excellent, the more information you can get, the better, right? You've got more to work with. You have a better understanding of the quality of your lead, the urgency. You know, if they're saying they're looking to buy in the next 30 to 60 days versus someone that says they're six months to a year out, you know, if you get two leads that come in at the same time and you get the information of the guy that's ready to buy tomorrow or this month and the guy that says, hey, call me in, in six months, you know who to call and who to prioritize. You know, if someone's got a, a, a strong down payment, strong credit, they tell you they're looking for a home that's, you know, six to $700,000 versus someone looking for something at 120 to $150,000 and you're gonna spend your time with somebody and you're trying to figure out, you know, where to prioritize and where to focus, uh, that kind of stuff, obviously it's really important. Segmenting your database, segmenting your audience. Uh, a name, email, and phone number is absolutely crucial, really. I mean, you can't really do much without it. You could get all the other stuff, you know, a whole boatload of information, but without their contact info, all that's not really very useful for you. But understanding also that asking for contact information right up front and, and going right for the jugular scares a lot of people off. If all you ask for is give me your contact info, a lot of people don't even engage with that kind of lead capture form versus, hey, so what kind of loan are you looking for? Okay, now what's like the estimated value of the home? Okay, and is it like a single family, a condo? And you go through these like really easy to answer questions and you start building it up and you start to get a little bit of momentum and they get involved and they get committed. And then when you ask for contact information, you have a much higher chance of converting them into a lead than you would if it was just give me your name, email, and phone number. And you can see every major billion dollar mortgage lead generation company out there doing it that way. And it's for a reason. They've tested every method possible. They've, they've experimented with, well, we don't really need all this other stuff. All we really need is their name, email, and phone number. Why don't we really make it as simple as possible and just ask for the basic information? And what did that lead to? A high bounce rate, people that don't even start interacting because they just right off the bat, they click and they just see, give me your contact info, and they're immediately turned off by it. You know, there's no commitment, so they'll just put in, hey, Batman, uh, fake phone number, whatever email address, submit just to see what happens because they didn't, you know, commit a minute or two of their time to kind of getting more involved with the process. They're just like, oh, let's just see, maybe, maybe this thing will spit out a rate for me. I'll just put in some bogus info. So you get not only a 
lower conversion rate in many cases, you also get a higher rate of bogus information coming through. So by going through kind of a more thorough question and answer process, but by doing it in a way that's very simple for the client. I mean, if you ask 20 questions on one page, a whole bunch of fill in the blanks, you start out by give me your name, email, and phone number with like red asterisks next to it. And then at the bottom, you make them solve some like riddle with some mystery numbers that they got to answer the code to, to to submit the form. I mean, could you make it any more difficult for somebody to fill out your lead capture form? And that is, I encourage you, go to LendingTree, go to go to uh, lower my bills, um, go to some of these big companies, go to Zillow's site. If you go right on Zillow and you click on getting pre-approved, you'll see how they ask for the information. You know, every single Zill uh, Zillow listing has a button to get pre-qualified as part of their lead gen that drives their long form lead generation uh, uh, efforts. Every single listing says get pre-qualified and they use that as like a catapult to get buyers from just looking at properties to getting buyers to fill out information and getting mortgage leads out of it. So these same kinds of tactics can be also uh, used with your real estate partners, with your single property websites, by offering an MLS access feature on your website, you know, to, to funnel home buyers in, but using it as a method to generate mortgage leads. So you're not just coming at it from the mortgage angle, you're using real estate, which I know you're very, very familiar with. Um, you know, as a way to generate mortgage leads. So there's a whole lot of information that's useful. Asking for it in a way that doesn't scare people off is key. Uh, the more of it you can get, you know, minus asking for something like a social security number, it's not really ever appropriate in a lead generation environment where you haven't spoken with the person to ask for social. It's, we're not, I don't think, quite there at a point where people feel comfortable giving that up until they've spoken with somebody for the most part but you don't need that right off the bat. It's just like, hey, give me about a dozen answers to some questions that help me figure out how good of a quality lead you are, and then let's get you on the phone and ask questions and build a relationship and do all these wonderful things that we can do when we get you to come out of the dark and <laughs> tell us who you are and what you're looking for. I dig it. Yeah, and you'll see a lot of those trying to send people right to their application page. You know, like you said, with the social security, and I mean, good luck uh, trying to get a conversion no matter how fancy your application site is and it's got videos and all that embedded that's that's cool but those people don't want to fill it out until they know who you are um, and you can put all kinds of stuff on your site that tells who you are but they still they uh, I agree with you they want to talk to you at least a little bit through email text or, or over the phone or Facebook Messenger before they are ready to have you start analyzing their financial data um, yeah and it's you so, know even the even the the reference to apply now in most in most cases that's like the only call to action you find on many, many mortgage websites. It's, you mm -hmm. know, apply now or apply online or even something that's, that's better, that's not as, as much of a, I'd say, a, a turn off for a, a potential client like get started. That's a, that's a good button. But where's that get started going to take me? And if that just plops me onto a loan app where now all of a sudden I'm looking at like an Ellie Mae Encompass loan application or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. you just totally busted your lead generation funnel. You know, you got them to click. You got them to your website in the first place or to your landing page in the first place. Amazing. That was obstacle one. You handled it. Then you got them to click on your call to action button. Awesome. And now you dropped them onto a loan application. You completely dropped the ball. You know, take them now into an engaging question and answer tool that doesn't feel like a loan application that's like, hey, get pre-approved, find out exactly how much home you can afford in 60 seconds or less, or something along those lines. Right. Hey. So you're trying to solve one of their problems, and you're, you're telling them that you're going to solve their problem or give them information fairly quickly, and you're not making them, you're not using the, the words, you know, apply or uh, get approved for a mortgage, that kind of stuff doesn't necessarily <laughs> excite them until they until they, they see a little bit more. I mean, e even on Zillow, yeah, it might say get pre-qualified, but if the first question they ask you was your name and your phone number, they've tried that in the past. It doesn't work very well at all. Yeah, think, other than like, hey, schedule an appointment to see this property, which is a very natural, I'm yeah. scheduling an appointment. Here's my info. Let's look at this home maybe this week, later this week. That's right. a very obvious way of asking for info for a specific real estate listing. But as far as their mortgage lead generation, they're always ushering you right into that question and answer process again. Same thing all, all the big lead generators are doing. Some of the bigger mortgage companies at a corporate level, a couple of them are starting to, I think, see the light. But loan officers are still left with 
old tools that don't work. They're not lead generation ready. Um, you know, they're not they're not optimizing what they're doing to get leads, and then they're going out and buying leads or buying traffic or doing marketing without, like, again, without doing the proper housekeeping. It's like, how many loan officers will sign up, you know, and continue to do something like a newsletter, for example, every month that they'll be sending out their content. They've got a whole little template set up. You know, we are very proactive about calling our clients, saying, hey, let's take a look at your next marketing effort. Uh, you know, what are you doing this week? Are you meeting with any realtors? You know, whatever it is you're currently doing, let's see if we can get some better results just by, again, implementing the same kind of techniques the big companies are using to generate these leads. You know, we've got some clients that do five leads a week. I've got some clients that do five leads a day. Um, you know, it just really depends on how much effort you're putting into it and, and, uh, so you yeah, kind of mentioned what I think doing. is one of your one of your main you know products, and, and it's it's the those solutions, the the survey forms or landing pages that allow the folks to to build that question and answer. I mean, I think you call it gamify. In, yes. In some of your presentations and books, when you talk about that. I mean, you've got that solution built into Lead Pops. Um, and you know, how how are folks implementing that? Are they are they using that? as the front end of a funnel where somebody sees that immediately in the, in the opt-in? Are they using that as email series? Or are they using that with their past clients? Or are they kind of combining all three in, a, in a kind of a, in an art? All of it. All of it. There's a science to it. It all needs to work together. The website needs to be optimized with lead capture tools built into it so that when you click on a call to action button, you immediately drive that user into the lead capture piece. And that lead capture piece needs to really be isolated. So I don't click on a on a form that's kind of nested into the website and all the other stuff on the website still floating around, you know, distracting the user. So setting the site up to behave, again, like some of these big lead gen companies, I keep saying the same thing in that respect because it's always looking at what are the big companies doing. We've mimicked this. We've we've done it for small LOs that have seen great results just by moving into a better optimized website. Same traffic they were getting last week, but all of a sudden they got double or triple the amount of leads simply because the traffic that they're driving is now going to an optimized website. You know, if you're doing Facebook ads, driving the traffic into a funnel directly versus the home page of your website is always optimal. You know, the home page of the website needs to drive the users into the funnels, but anytime you can isolate the funnel by itself and, and drive the consumer into that as a landing page versus taking them to the home page of a website, that's always going to have multiple options. You know, if I'm doing an ad going after VA loans or 203K or whatever the specific niche product might be, you want to drive them to a landing page that's really got messaging and nothing but information on that topic versus like the home page of a website where now they'll, they're looking at, you know, 20 or 30 different loan products and programs, messaging that's really general because it's supposed to kind of appeal to everybody because it's the home page of a website versus a landing page. Um, you know, if you've got basic lead gen where you're capturing names and emails and that's it, then tying a better uh, questionnaire kind of follow-up uh, system in place to to drip on those leads via text message and email is important. You know, I see a lot of systems out there that they can generate a lot of just names and emails, for example, a simple opt-in, get this free report, or click here to bypass this gateway to look at this real estate listing or something like that, and you can generate a lot of volume of leads, but just getting a whole bunch of names and email addresses, it starts to kind of lose its luster when we're not getting these people to, mm -hmm. you know, to interact right away. So building the follow-up into a system like that, that then drives these people back into your more thorough engagement tool. Mm -hmm. So we can get them to give their phone number and more information. So we take them from just a name and an email address to a name, email, phone number, plus a dozen more pieces of information that really help us figure out where this person is and if they're worth us calling and following up with and spending you know, time and effort on. I think one of the phrases TJ and I use a lot is a high funnel lead. Like you get people at the top, maybe you just got their pixel, maybe you got their email, you know, maybe they've clicked around your site a little bit, and you've given them some information. But like you said, if you give them all the information, there's no need for them to opt in or even reach back out to you because they've already got what they wanted. But, you know, that once you get some of that information, then you, you need to build in some, some follow-up series to get them engaged more and perhaps not waste time with the folks who are not ready to talk to you right now but focus on the people who are ready to give you more information and continue to move along. Now, you guys um, help LOs with that as well. I mean, you have, um, I don't, I, I'm not sure exactly where you're at at this point in the game, but talk about some of the other products and the things that you do to help the LOs 
narrow the funnels down and to kind of to kind of automate uh, the process so that they're not having to reach out to a thousand people. That they can you know slim that list down to maybe a, a few dozen. Absolutely. So optimizing the follow-up systems and, and it, that that you have in place. You know, for us, we've got email fire built into the back end of funnels. So when a lead comes in, if you've got email fire enabled, it doesn't cost any extra to, to use the email fire platform. Uh, but if you are, you know, on a drip type uh, newsletter system or something that's got autoresponders or the ability to do email blasts, if you already have it and you're happy with it, cool. You know, chances are we can plug funnels into your system. If you're working with us, you have access to email fire and that's where the drip emails come in. That's the ability to do like, you know, a dozen or a 60 day or 90 day follow up where every other day now they're getting information from you on autopilot. Uh, the idea being, you know, stay in front of the client, but also using it as a way to drive the more serious people back and turning them into a conversation. So if it's just a name and an email address, there's not much we can do with that. But if we can use good messaging and convince them to, hey, you know, you're looking at homes in this price range, let's find out exactly what you can afford. Click here to find out in just 60 seconds or less. And all of a sudden that email includes a link and when they click that link, we then drive them back into that lead capture questionnaire. I mean, ideally people will call, we'll get them on the phone, we'll create a relationship. I don't even want them, you know, a lot of people will say, hey, I don't even want them going to my website. I don't want them going to my landing page. I want them to call me. I hear that all the time. It's like, I want them to call me too. Trust me, I, don't we all? Mm -hmm. But guess what? They don't want to talk to a salesperson necessarily. They don't know you. They're doing their research at night. It's 8 o'clock. They're not calling up a salesperson. You need to have something that like behaves the same way you do if they came into your office, but it works for you 24-7, and it's fun to interact with, and it, it's, it's you know a, a method of collecting the same thing that you would ask in the first couple minutes of talking to them over the phone, except for you've got an online digital, uh, assistant basically that's doing that for you that's engaging the consumer that's asking questions and you basically you want to plug these things in everywhere your email signature your email blasts your follow-up systems your uh, autoresponders your text messages it should be plugged into every social media profile that you have it should be on your on your social posts I mean your blog posts I've got a client signed up wrote us a testimonial his first two months generated 80 leads I think he said 75 80 leads first two months all he did was the blog posts that he had been writing already for months, he just started sprinkling links into the funnels, into the blog content. So like every other paragraph, there will be some text that he has now basically embedded a link in the text that says, hey, get started, find out how much home you can afford, or you know, use our free 203K loan qualifier and find out if you're eligible. It's like three or four times in the blog content. As you scroll down, it's not just at the top or at the bottom. You've got it embedded, you know, strategically in a few areas in the blog content. So now people, instead of just reading the blog and disappearing and going who, who knows where, you know, he just educated them, all for them to leave his blog and then go back online and get sucked into somebody else's mousetrap. You know, so instead now he's taking control of his leads because now he's doing the same thing Lending Tree and Zillow and all these big companies do with their blog. Every article they spin up, it's always got links that strategically take you back to how they make money off of that traffic. The way they make money off of that traffic is converting the anonymous visitor into a lead that they can turn around and sell. So it's just like, let's do the same thing they just did, but instead of that whole selling lead thing, let's <laughs> convert it so we can generate it for ourselves using that same strategy. So if we're putting out blog content, email blasts, uh, you know, social media posts, all of this, we're driving people back into this interactive question and answer process. And it's like, one uh, of the... I, I tell my, my partner Jay in Military Mortgage Bootcamp, who happens to be in the office with me, you always talk about like like having the best information and, and, and you know writing these blog posts and making these videos and doing all these things that show that you're an authority. That's great. But if nobody's reaching out to you, if you're standing in the corner yelling or if you're just kind of like on the internet, but you never find a way to talk to people, you're not really helping the world. I mean you're you're the people are going elsewhere. They come in. You're, you're just basically like, a, like you said, like a, like a, a business card. Oh, there's the website. Oh, there's the information I needed. You know, cool. People use Google to get information. It's the information age, but they don't necessarily, like you say, they don't want to talk to marketers and salespeople. It's our job to figure out how to get them to talk to us, because otherwise we go out of business, right? So, the, the yeah, you know, that's the main reason I asked you on this call today, because I think it's a, it's a shift in mindset for a lot of loan officers. I think a lot of loan officers that are in this group and all the folks I've talked to, and they've been in the business five, six, 10, 15, 20, 30 years or whatever, 
And we, we still pound the phones and meet with agents and I'm never, never saying we shouldn't do that. But the consumer is, is going out there online more and more and we are just sitting here and complaining about it. Oh man, I can't believe that guy went to, you know, we went to, to the rocket. I can't believe he went there. I can't believe he went there. It's because of the function of this. I mean, they're gonna continue to do that and we need to pay attention to it. It's, it's crazy for us not to pay attention to it. We say we're paying attention to it, but then we don't watch hangouts like this. We don't learn, we don't build this stuff into our websites. We don't do, like you say, what the big guys are doing. There's a reason they're doing it that way. Absolutely, I'm with you 100%, and it really is. Like, how do we best help the client? Even if the 1,500-word right. article on 203K loans or reverse mortgages or whatever we whipped up is just stellar content, so good, nothing else like it out there, and then you just kind of leave them hanging. They read the article. They're like, yep. okay, well, I'm not going to post a comment to your blog, and uh, <laughs> the only other thing on there says apply for a mortgage. So, okay, well, yeah. thanks for the info, but now I'm going to click back, and guess who is targeting whatever the heck they just searched that got them to your page they're right back into Google and they're looking at all of your competitors who are spending 25 30 40 bucks a click just to be there for something like you know Michigan VA loans or something along those lines so it's just a matter of just hey let's let's optimize what you're doing and everyone thinks optimization oh are you you know are you talking about SEO search engines yeah. uh, those are cool if you can if you know how to work those which I'm very I'm pretty experienced with we do pretty well ourselves you know if you type in mortgage marketing we're uh, uh, last time I checked I think we're number two uh, Zillow's paying to be there TransUnion is paying to be there these are expensive clicks we're number two organically uh, so you know we do some consulting for clients to help them understand SEO search engines what they can do on their end but getting traffic is half the battle you could get all the traffic in the world you could be doing radio TV billboards search engine optimization all this good stuff but if all you're getting is traffic and you're not converting that traffic into leads you're basically you're throwing your, your money out the window you can't do business with clicks you can't refinance a click you can't refer a click to a realtor and 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 buddy buddy with them you've got to convert the clicks into leads and that's how you help them you get them on the phone and now instead of reading an article they're like talking to the man Michael Fisher the expert on VA loans like he's the guy he knows everything so we got to do our best to make it as easy as possible for someone that opened up that email or found that blog post or stumbled into your social media uh, update and, and making it as easy as, as possible to take them from this anonymous person just reading stuff online to this lady that's now like answering these questions and going through the process and now she just gave up her name email and phone number with like a dozen pieces of information and you can call her back while she's still looking at your thank you page you know what I mean? And it's an exclusive lead to you. There's no one else that gets that information. And it's a different kind of uh, experience when you're following up with a lead that recognizes you, your name, your company, is expecting a phone call versus some like really generic mortgage landing page that a lead aggregator uses where now the client, their phone's blowing up. They don't know who's calling or from where. It's a very different experience when you're following up with your own exclusive leads again versus buying some leads from some middleman operation. You brought up a good point there, and it was something I wanted to ask you about because the timing is good. It, the concept of staying in front of people, building your brand, and you mentioned it earlier in the call, retargeting or re-engaging with your audience. There's, there, we know there's a lot of ways to retarget. Some of the folks watching here perhaps think, oh, that's just for the internet guys. I'm a face-to-face -face guy, but you know, retargeting could be simply emailing your customers more information. It's the same concept. You're staying in front of them you're putting additional offers in front of them, you're moving them along the sales process by making a series of sales. You know, the first sale was to get you to click on my page. The second sale was to get you to click again so I got your email. The third sale was to get you to open my emails. The fourth sale was to get you to read them and then click on this survey page. You know, the, the next sale was to get you to fill out the survey. And then the sale after that was to get you to reply to the text message to call me and set an appointment. Then getting you to answer the stinking phone was the next sale. Okay, so we've already made like how many sales? Six, seven, eight sales before we even get them to the point where they're talking to us. And that's where I think a lot of the loan officers are struggling is like you said, oh, I just want to get them on the phone and talk and then I can crush the sale. You know, I got sales skills to the max. Thanks. Yes, you do, buddy. You're fantastic. I love you to death. And, and you know, I'm glad that you can overcome objections like a champ. But what you forgot was that you know, if you really want to be a good marketer, you got to understand marketing and sales go hand in hand. You had a whole series of sales that you're missing that number one through seven before you even got that guy on the phone. So, you know, that your marketing up front 
it has to have a sales component to it to get people to move to the next step. It has to convince them to make some kind of decision. There's a little bit of sales that goes hand in hand with that. And some people think, well, marketing is just, you know, I put my information out there and they see me and then they reach out to me. But as you've, you know, proven through your systems, through your work with these giant companies, marketing and sales go hand in hand. And there's a series of things that have to happen before the people are ready to talk to you. So I know you guys play a lot in that space. What would you tell the LO right now? That, you know, and we'll, we'll try to wrap this up. I try to keep these 30, 40 minutes. The LO that's, that's sitting there in his office that's already like, somewhat successful, has a lot of realtor relationships, keeps hearing he should be better at social media, you know, he's always done pretty well. And now someone's just telling him, well, dude, you just gotta pound the phones. You gotta talk to more, you know, agents and you gotta lean on them. And he keeps hearing, well, you know, I gotta pay for Zillow, I gotta pay realtor, my agents are slow, this market's gonna be tough. I really wanna play around in this, you know, this social media, this internet marketing, this lead generation space. I'm putting you on the spot, it's a tough answer, but you know, in cool. two or three minutes, what do you tell this guy? What does he do first? You know, should you use your services? Should you listen to your, to your you know, your book on, on audio? What does that guy do to get from where he's at today to starting to sprinkle in more of this marketing and conversion stuff? Because that guy knows it's important. I mean, I know it's important, but I still do the traditional stuff. I still call and text my agents, but I sprinkle that in on top. So, so picture me without the ability to sprinkle. What do I do next? Well, I would say the first thing is identifying where do you want to be with your business are you looking to bring on more clients are you looking to do more are you happy with where you're at i can't help the guy that's happy with where he's at that doesn't want to do any more loans uh if you're at like you know a handful of deals and you want to double it triple it consistently you got to set yourself up to kind of control your destiny you have to be able to be in a position where you're not relying upon a realtor or a good month or rates to drop or your top agent that sends you you know a few deals a month all of a sudden disappears or some other loan officer showed up and snaked them from you you know <laughs> good things come to an end so setting yourself up with the right foundation to capture leads and understanding what the biggest companies out there are doing are, these are strategies and solutions that you can be implementing yourself um, uh, it starts with the right foundation. If you've got a website and a system in place and you've got email marketing and you're doing social media and you're following up with your past clients and you're talking to realtors, that means you've got a lot of opportunity and it doesn't mean you're gonna become some internet junkie sales, you know, lead generation person necessarily. That doesn't have to become like your whole new business model and you completely change up how you're doing things. You're doing stuff that's obviously working and if you wanna take it to the next level, you've got to tack on the lead gen component and make that part of what you're doing. And in a lot of cases, clients just plug in the right solutions in the right places and they start getting a even if it's one or two extra deals per month. Some, for some folks, that's it. They don't really do anything different. They just optimized the stuff they were already doing to get better results. And without even spending an extra cent on advertising or an extra dollar on advertising, you could get a handful of extra deals every single month if you're doing marketing. If you're not doing anything at all and you're looking to get started with marketing and lead generation, I really think there's no better place to look than the Mortgage Funnels platform we've developed. Um, and signing up for a free trial. You know, I've taken the 300 and what, th 330 pages of this book, and we just last month relaunched the funnels admin panel, the whole back end of Lead Pops Funnels. So the front end is awesome. It's always been really optimized for lead capture, but that was the part the consumer interacted with. There's a whole back end to funnels. There's the ability to customize your pages, make changes to the calls to action, the thank you pages, the messaging, tracking your statistics, your conversion rates, all that lives inside the back end admin panel. And last month we relaunched the whole back-end admin, huge upgrade, uh, big improvements to the UX, big improvements to the speed, the functionality, a lot of new features. And my favorite part is the new training overlay, where every time you logged in, uh, every time you log in, um, until you click a little link at the bottom that says here, you don't want to see it when you log in anymore. Uh, for those folks that have already gone through it uh, at that point, you don't have to see it every time, but we make it a point to, to bring it to your attention every time you log into the admin. There are six training modules. So again, this book's 330 pages long. I distilled the six most valuable components that I think anybody that's looking to get started with can immediately, same day, start generating leads. And since we've launched, we've had several uh, folks that have just reached out to us proactively and said, hey man, I went live yesterday. I've already got 
a dozen leads in my inbox just following module number two or following mm -hmm. module number four. There's six training modules. So I, take, I took the 300 pages, it's all good, but I broke it down into six modules that you have access to immediately upon sign up that give you a whole blueprint, a 90 day plan, follow this, you will get results guaranteed. I mean, it couldn't be made any easier than that. It's not only the cool technology and the best thing out there for lead gen, but the strategies and the coaching and the training that we provide uh, that I think make it really, no doubt, the best system for an LO or a mortgage broker that's looking to generate business to, to try out. And it's a free 30-day trial. Uh, and if you've tried it before and, uh, you know, you went a different direction and you want to give it a try again now that we've got the new, new uh launch released, we're offering a free renewal on 30-day trials to past clients if folks want to give it a try and check out what that looks like. So how do they, how do they get that 30-day trial? Where do, they, where do they go? What do they do next? They go to your site? Go to, yeah, go to www.leadpops.com. You can't miss it. Just like we kind of practice what we preach, <laughs> there's a free trial button uh, scattered throughout the website, and we just kind of nice. take you through a very simple sign up and launch process. Uh, and again, it's it's a free 30 days. We have clients daily that are signing up for a free trial within the first few hours or the first couple days of being live, depending on what they're doing and, and where they're implementing it, are getting results. And this gives you the full, like, this is what you do starting today, day one. Uh, going forward, how to how to really start implementing this stuff and, and making it second nature. So that next time you're like, oh, you know what, I'm meeting with a realtor this afternoon. I might want to maybe take a look at his website or just see what he's doing for his mortgage content on his website, for example, or on her website to see if there's any angles I can take to get myself plugged into there. You know, if a, a client's doing a social media post or a Facebook ad or an email blast, before you send that out or before you hit update, look at this training module or talk to our team. This is going to tell you exactly how to optimize it to get better results than anything you're doing currently. Cool. So you've got all that. I mean, people can jump in, people can try it. Now, I one question I get a lot from people in this group and, and from friends of mine all over the country, do you guys do – you know, do you do consulting for larger yes. groups like mortgage okay. companies that need some help? You know, they've got they, – they think that everything is, is going well, but then they look and, oh, yeah, we got 15,000 Facebook likes. We have all this traffic to our website, but um, we got, you know, 80 leads last year total. You know, we probably need to fix that strategy a little bit so we get more conversion. You guys do consulting for companies as well, right? Yes. So we do – you know, it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's really on a per per – scenario basis just to kind of see hey what are you what are you doing that's unique how many loan officers do you have what kind of loans are you going after these kinds of things uh, and diagnosing you know on a unique individual basis what would be the right solution for that company so we do have some enterprise level packages we can offer for you know companies or groups or teams um, so that's definitely uh, something we're, we're more than happy to talk about or talk with clients about the last question we'll let everyone get back to their day this this is the big question I get this one all the time from people that are, you know, working in any of my programs or, or talking to, to us about lead gen, the compliance gorilla, like, oh my gosh. I mean, obviously you guys work for some big players in this space, so so you have to be compliant or they wouldn't even hire you. Um, you know, what kind of things are, are important when you're, you know, when you're marketing and what kind of things do, do you do to make sure the stuff that you're doing uh, stays compliant for the LOs that are using your, your systems? Sure. So compliance is definitely a big part of what we do. We're always dealing with compliance departments, lawyers, banks. You know, we have a lot of big banks, not just like some of the big lead generation companies, uh, but actual clients that are banks that are using our platform. So we've been through a lot of scrutiny in terms of seeing what our pages say, what, uh, you know, what the security factor is, what do, you know, uh, the privacy policy and the NMLS number and the equal housing opportunity logo and all that. Many of those things are already built right into every single funnel, uh, just right out of the box when you launch. 90% of your compliance requirements are already going to be ready to go. But then as far as going in and if your company has unique licensing or disclaimers or privacy policy they want you to link up to, that kind of stuff can be literally added with a point and a click. We have a new global settings section in the funnels admin where you can add, like, for example, one privacy policy across all 32 of your funnels with one effort. So you're not going in and having to do this over and over again for each individual funnel. If there's some compliance stuff you need to have in place, literally you plug it in. It's a copy and paste, you click update, all 32 of your funnels are now optimized for compliance with that information. So it's a big yeah, part of what cool. we do. For and another thing will be, 
Go ahead, Bob. I was going to say on, one more thing. I was going to say another thing that I think is, is relevant to the, some of these questions is a done-for-you marketing system and program. We're going to be launching that here in the next few months. So a lot of our clients, no matter how much training we do, they still don't want to get in there and do it themselves, which is understandable. If you're closing loans and you're out there talking to realtors, meeting with clients, some of this stuff just becomes, you know, starts to work against you. So we are launching some done-for-you marketing uh, packages, which we'll be announcing in a few months here as well, where we're doing it, running it, doing the retargeting, doing the Facebook ads, doing all that kind of stuff for you. Cool, man. I dig it. Well, hopefully we get a chance to hang out again, and we'll maybe circle back once you got some of that stuff ready. But, uh, yeah. you know, if people can go to their site, you know, they can maybe tag you in here. Uh, you're a huge asset to any alone, anybody that hasn't uh, at least tried out your systems or read your books or listened to, you know, your book uh, in Amazon, which I'm going to go out and buy right away because that's the kind of thing I'll do every single day on my way uh, back and forth at work. It, it, we appreciate your dedication to the industry. And I can speak for myself, but I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of us, at least in this group, we appreciate that you're sharing this information with everybody and not just, you know, one giant conglomerate like Zillow, and you, you know, you didn't sell out, you didn't let them completely, you said, no, this is, this is information for the people. Yes, of course, we're for profit, but, you know, there's a lot of ways to, to run a business, and let's, you know, let's, let's focus on what we're good at, and we'll let, we'll let the market decide. So, I like it, man. That's how I think, too. Let the market decide. You know, don't keep everything a secret. Make the products available. People want to buy them, they want to buy them. If they don't want to buy them, they don't want to buy them. But, you know, I, I don't think there's a ton of secrets out there that don't end up coming to light in this business. I think pretty much everything that's working, you can find as an LO. You just got to look hard enough, and sometimes you got to pay a little bit for coaching and training and systems. So I dig it, buddy. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot, Michael. Thanks for the opportunity, and uh, let's do it again. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. All right. Peace out, guys. Right. We'll chat soon.